that today I'll be talking about uh, nocturnal and diurnal pollinators in Taita Hills, Kenya, complementarity along a land use gradient. My name is Bak Utiano, and uh, this is a project planning meeting held today, the 13th of June, 2023, at the University of Würzburg. So this talk is going to be structured as follows. I'll give some background and then talk about the objectives, uh, methods, sampling program, and uh, time schedule. So first we would like to look at what the main issues are. And first thing is declining diurnal insect pollinators, especially bees, have caused crop yield concerns globally. And despite being undervalued, nocturnal insects such as macromoths can complement the diurnal pollinators in uh, crop pollination. Compared to diurnal flower visitors, understanding the extent of uh, nocturnal pollen transport by moths is limited, especially in diverse tropical ecosystems such as Kenya. So here, the contribution of moths in pollination is basically in twofold. The first is uh, some plant taxa might predominantly rely on nocturnal pollinators and also plants that uh, can be pollinated day and night might benefit from macromoths in regions with low bee diversity. So this study really uh, will unravel the critical role of nocturnal moths alongside their diurnal counterparts in pollen transport and establish the economic contribution to the crop production. And the objectives, first is to assess the diversity and plant pollinator interactions involving diurnal and nocturnal pollinators of coffee and papaya crops along a land use intensification gradient. The second objective is to quantify the functional role of night active macromoths for pollination and plant reproduction. And the last objective is to establish the impact of land use intensity on night active macromoth diversity, abundance, and their linked pollination service. So for the methods here, uh, the study will be basically conducted on 13 fields, 15 for coffee and 15 for papaya within the Taita Hills in Kenya from September 2023 to August of 2026. And this area is about 175 kilometers inland of the Indian Ocean near uh, the town of Voi. So this is the map which is showing uh, Kenya and also where the study area is. And of course, it's also showing some land cover and land use types, which are on the far bottom right here in the legend. So the study will examine 15 coffee and 15 papaya plots, as I've already said, with varying, or which are already varying in land use intensity from less than 10% to more than 90% within three kilometer radius of each site. And uh, land use intensity here will be assessed through two methods. The first is to evaluate the crop management history. And here we'll categorize farms as high, medium, or low, depending on the input. So high uh, intensive farms will be those that are applying synthetic agrochemicals. Medium are those that apply biopesticides and biofertilizers. And low intensive fields will be those that do not apply any of those. And then the second um, approach is to assess these fields using farm sizes. So with intensified farms having more than 70% of cropland within a 3-kilometer radius, medium intensified fields ranging from 30% to 70%, and the least intensified fields having less than 30% of crop cover. Now the selection of the final 30 fields or sites for the project will consider both agrochemical use and landscape approach. Now for the sampling program, we have uh, five work packages. The first one is uh, diversity of flower visitors. And here sampling will occur along 350 meter linear transects per site. And the following approaches will be used to sample arthropods visiting coffee and papaya flowers. The first is using portable light traps which will be activated for 10 minutes every hour from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. in the morning to capture nocturnal macromoth communities and provide an overview of the moth population. 
The second approach is pan trapping, which will be conducted using ultraviolet bright white, yellow, and blue pans placed at the end of the 50 meter transect that I talked about to capture diurnal pollinators. And the last is timed visual counts, which will be performed during the day and night along the transect to sample diurnal and nocturnal flower visitors respectively. And the flower observations will be conducted for 30 minutes at 9 a.m. midday, 3 p.m. and then again 9 p.m. midnight and 3 a.m. in the morning. So for work package 2, which is basically on plant pollinator network, insects visiting coffee and papaya flowers will be tracked to adjacent plots whenever possible to identify other flowers they visit. And here we'll take uh, plant photos and vouchers, which will help in the identification uh, by botanists. And this data will be used to construct a plant pollinator network and calculate the species strengths of the flower visitors. Additionally, we will deploy a small scale uh, pollen DNA metabolic barcoding sampling, which will be used to overcome the limitations of the above approaches. And here, insects visiting the study plants will be sampled with 10 individuals randomly caught per site for two seasons, and this gives us 600 samples in total. Then DNA extraction from uh, pollen will follow the protocol described by Sickle and others in 2015 at the Department of Animal Ecology and Tropical Biology at the University of Würzburg in Germany. The third work package is on diversity of host plants, level food and preparation of moth pollinators. And here host plants will be used uh, that are normally used for egg laying, larval feeding and preparation will be assessed using a 10 meter by 10 meter quadrat per site. One quadrat will be placed within the crop field, while remaining three will be located in the natural and semi-natural habitats that are adjacent to this crop field. And the plants will be thoroughly sucked for eggs, larvae and pupae on both the upper and lower sides of the leaves, branches and stems. And the numbers of these um, life stages will be recorded and if necessary, they will be collected by hand and labeled. And then this larvae will be raised until they pupate and emerge as adults, which will then be pinned and identified to species or morphospecies levels. The leaves and uh, if visible flowers of all host plants will be photographed and collected and pressed for future identification purposes. Okay, so the fourth work package is on fruit set, and here we'll, inv is, we'll investigate pollen limitation. <clears throat> Bagging and uh, hand pollination experiments will be conducted on the two crops under study, and at each site, 25 branches of coffee plants and 25 papaya plants will be assigned to four treatments. Five plants will have their flowers covered with tool bags opened only at night for nocturnal uh, pollinator visits. Another five plants will remain covered throughout the flowering season to assess self-pollination. Another five plants will be left uncovered for natural pollination by both diurnal and nocturnal flower visitors. And another five plants will be covered at night but left open during the daytime to allow for no diurnal flower visitors pollination. And additionally, five plants of each crop per site will be fully protected from flower visitors for hand pollination experiments. On these plants, pollen from other plants of the same variety will be gently applied to at least 10 marked flower stigmas. And the plants will, will then be uh, recaged to facilitate fruit development. The last work package is de determining the drivers of diurnal and nocturnal moth pollination. And here, this work package will examine the link between observed pollinator richness, abundance, network structure, and pollination functions. It emphasizes or it will synthesize the findings from work package 1 to 4 to understand the combined impacts of landscape gradients, local farm management intensity, crop types, and different pollinator groups, which are basically the day flying and night flying ones. We will also consider the effects of light sources on transects, exploring the potential consequences 
of pollination services if insect pollinator populations decline due to broad spectrum lighting and artificial light at night. So here we'll use satellite images to determine light pollution at each site and incorporate it as an explanatory variable in statistical models. So the outcomes of this study is of course that uh, the research will have significant benefits for various stakeholders. The first stakeholder here are the local coffee and papaya farmers who will gain appreciation for the role of pollinators in maintaining a healthy agricultural landscape resulting in increased crop yield, quality and landscape health. This can lead to higher profits. The second group of stakeholders are conservationists who will benefit by obtaining knowledge about pollinators and network diversity in tighter hills. This information will assist in identifying threats to core flowering species and developing protection plans involving local actors and national agencies. The third stakeholder to benefit are ecologists and researchers who will gain understanding of effective pollinator species and their ecological needs and this knowledge can be used to develop plans for resource protection and habitat enhancement. And of course, policymakers will also benefit from the research by creating a pollinator management plan, collaborating with agricultural officials, farmers, and value chain stakeholders to conserve pollinators while maximizing uh, incomes. So for the work plan, uh, I've deployed here what I intend to do in the next eight months. Uh, from September 2023 to April of 2024. And there are two main tasks here. The first is selection of the study sites and measurement of uh, baseline data. The second is diversity of flowers, of uh, flower visitors, uh, pollen, DNA metabarcoding, and plant pollinator networks, and also food set. These are enough activities to last for eight months, and I hope that uh, enough samples will be collected at the end of this period to be transported back to Germany for the analysis of uh, DNA uh, in the pollen. So I want to thank you very much for your time. I also want to thank uh, the gracious sponsorship of the German Research Foundation and the University of Fußberg for hosting this uh, research. So thank you so much. Until I uh, give you further updates later.